Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Kyle and this is Kaizen DIY Gym. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make squat wedges. There are many reasons to use squat wedges, but the most common reason is increased range of motion during squats. Having a slight amount of heel elevation can help people with ankle mobility limitations achieve full squat depth. There are plenty of great videos on YouTube that go more in depth on the science. I personally recommend this one. Before squat wedges existed, people would use plates, a two x four, or whatever else they could find to elevate the ankle. Prime Fitness was the company to bring the original squat wedge to market back in 2017. And in 2018, they released the Solos, which is a pair of smaller wedges, one for each foot. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make both types of wedges. If after watching all this, you decide you'd rather buy a pair of squat wedges, I recommend checking out Prime Fitness. Some of my other affiliates also carry them, but Prime was the OG. As always, Always, all of the materials and tools that I use for this project are located in the description of this video. By purchasing from those links, it helps to support the channel. All right, let's get started. Safety first. Wear a dust mask. Wear eye protection. Wear hearing protection. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. In this video, I won't be giving exact measurements. There are a few variables such as foot size, foot width while squatting, and angle preference, and they'll be different for each person. What I will do is show you how to figure out your measurements. First off, you'll want the top piece to at least be wide enough to fit your shoe. The length of my shoe is about 11 and a half inches, so I add a couple inches to that for my top piece. The back piece will help determine the angle of your wedge. The taller the back piece, the greater the angle. If you're making a single wedge, you'll want to measure the width of your feet while squatting. This will be the width of your top piece. First up, the single wedge. It took about 30 minutes to build. It was relatively easy and cost can be between $30 to $40 depending on what plywood you use. I start off with a 15 and a half by 24 inch piece of plywood. I use my table saw to cross cut a three inch strip. These will be the top and back pieces. I add glue before using screws to attach these. Although I don't always show it in the footage, I pre-drill every single hole before putting a screw in. I highly recommend pre-drilling with a countersink drill bit because it'll help prevent the plywood from splitting. Once these two pieces are attached, we have the template for the side pieces. Simply lay this on the plywood and trace your cut. In case you're wondering, this is a 15 degree angle. There are lots of different ways to cut plywood. For these, I'll be using a jigsaw. In my opinion, the trickiest thing about using a jigsaw is making straight cuts. In this case, the pieces don't have to be perfect. I add a two x four to give everything some extra stability. I add three screws from the back side and attach the side pieces to it as well. Then I secure the rest of the pieces with a plethora of screws. I peel up the sticker and sand it to get it ready for spray paint. To match my other projects, I go with black on this one. After the paint dries, I add grip tape. This stuff is easy to cut and easy to apply. This thing is ready to use. I love the increased range of motion that I'm able to get with the wedge. Next, I'll be making a pair of single foot wedges. Time to build, difficulty, and cost are all the same as the wide wedge. If you already made the wide wedge, you can probably make these with the leftover pieces. I use my table saw to cut identical top pieces and back pieces. The measurements I use for these are 12 by seven and a quarter inches and six and a quarter by seven and a quarter inches. The assembly process is pretty similar with these. However, I bust out my nail gun to be more efficient. This helps to hold the pieces in place while adding screws. Again, using the assembled pieces as my template, I trace my cut. Then I use my jigsaw to cut these pieces. Because I'm making a pair of wedges, I need to cut out four of these. I 
I add the 2x4 and secure all of the pieces with plenty of screws. On this one, because of the height, I add an additional 2x4. Repeat for the other wedge. When I'm finished assembling, I notice the side pieces slightly protruding from the bottom. This is a quick fix with my belt sander. I sand the rest with my random orbit sander and apply a few coats of black spray paint. Once that's dry, I add grip tape and these are officially done. These wedges are great for squats and calf raises, but my favorite is using these on my belt squat. I even had enough material left over to make another pair. These are at a 12 degree angle. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you use squat wedges? What's your preferred angle? If you make a wedge or pair of wedges, tag me on Instagram or post it in the Facebook group or Reddit group. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.